Hello, Math 109 students. We are on chapter 6 now, uh, looking at 6.1. Section 6.1 uh, is about the concept of composite functions. Composite function is, is, is where we, we have two functions. We're going to compose them together, not by like adding or subtracting or multiplying them or something like that, but by uh, by going into one function and then out of that function and into the other. So the, the, the two functions are connected linearly together. So the one function is kind of inside the other. Um, really no good way to explain it except to show examples. Um, so let's say you have, uh, let's say you have f of x equals uh, 2x minus 1 and g of x is let's say, um, let's say, uh, let's say x squared. So, and let's say we, here's what it looks like. It could look like f of g of x. Um, then this is not an example. This is more explanation. If we have f of g of x, another way of saying that is f and then a little o and then g. So it's like fog, but that's, that just means f and that means of g of x. So what that means is, it actually means that you go into, you kind of work your way from the inside out. So what happens is, is x first goes into g. So x goes into the g function. And then it comes out as g of x whatever that might be. So if x was like 5, then g of x would be 25. And then that result now, let's see if it'll do something interesting like it did on the last one. So then that now goes into the f function. And uh, that gets spit out as as f of g of x. So the, the x goes into the g function and then that result goes into the f function. Um, same thing that happens here, the x goes into the g and then whatever that results in, that then goes into the f and then that gives the final answer. Uh, so let's just Take the five for example. If five goes in there and gets spit out as a twenty-five, and then that goes into the F and that gets spit out as a two times twenty-five is fifty. Fifty minus one is forty-nine. So um, yeah, so that would be like F of of G, and I like I like this notation better, but the book. And Math Excel is going to use this notation more, so I will use this one as well, so that you'll get used to it. F of g of five would be forty-nine. All right. Um, so, like, real life example might be, uh, um, and this is an example from the book, if I can remember it. Let's say you have an oil tanker that a hole gets punched in it and so it's leaking oil and it's leaking oil into the ocean and, and the, the patch of oil is growing on the surface of the ocean. So and it's a circle, circular shape and you want to know the rate at which that area of that circle is growing. And so maybe you know that the radius, the radius of that circle as a function of time is growing at a rate of three uh, feet per minute where t is in minutes and then you know that the area of a circle as a function of the radius is pi r squared right area of a circle is pi r squared so then so then you can compose the area as a function of the radius 
as a function of time would then be uh, where you plug t into r and you get 3t from that and you take that and plug it into a so it would be we basically would replace that whole r with 3t because that's what the radius is as a function of time so it would be pi times what are you doing screen pi times 3t squared which would be 9 pi t squared so the area would be growing at this rate um, if the radius was growing at a rate of 3 t then the area would be growing at a rate of 9 pi t squared so that's just one kind of a uh, semi real example of composition of functions so let's try to do this example based on what we've just said uh, if you want to go ahead and pause it and try these yourself you can do that but part a part a f of g of 1 that means I'm doing g of 1 first so that means I'm plugging 1 into the g function so 4 times 1 which is 4 then I'm doing f of that result so I'm doing f of 4 which is going to be 2 times 4 squared minus 3 which is 2 times 16 minus 3 which is uh, which is 32 minus 3 which is 29 I believe that would be the final answer if I've done my arithmetic correctly all right part B G of F of 1 that means I'm first plugging the 1 into the F function not into the G function so the 1 first goes into F then that result goes into G so I got to do F of 1 first which is going to be 2 times 1 squared minus 3 which is uh, 2 minus 3 which is negative 1 then I do G of that result so I'm doing G of negative 1 and so that's going to be 4 times negative 1 which is negative 4 all right part C F of F of negative 2 that means I'm plugging negative 2 into F then getting that result and plugging that result back into F again so F of negative 2 is 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 which is 2 times 4 minus 3 which is 8 minus 3 which is 5 so then we take that result and we plug that result into F again and so that's going to be 2 times 5 squared minus 3, which is 2 times 25, which is 50 minus 3, which is 47. So that would be the answer to part C. Part D is G of G of negative 1. So it means we're plugging negative 1 into G and then taking that result and plugging it back into G again. So first g of negative 1, which is going to be 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. This should be pretty quick. Then we're plugging negative 4 back into g again. So 4 times negative 4 is uh, negative 16. And that's the answer to part b. Now you can do these as many, you can do this as much as you want. You can do f of g of g of g of f uh, of 5. So you think about that. You plug 5 into F, get that result, plug it into G, get that result, plug it into G again, get that result, plug it into G again, get that result, plug it into F, get that result, and then you'd be finished. So you can you can kind of go however much you need to on these um, on these composite functions. All right, next example. Um, this time we're not plugging any number into uh, F. Uh, or G um, but we are just finding the general f of G function so that means I'm taking the whole G function and plugging it into F so I'm taking the whole G function which is 2x plus 3 and I am plugging that into F in the place of X there 
So that's going to be so f of g is equal to 2x plus 3 squared. So 2x plus 3 is going in the place of x. It's going in the place of x. So the x became 2x plus 3. So 2x plus 3 squared plus 3, and it goes in the place of that x too. So that x becomes 2x plus 3 minus 1. So now I've got to do some, some expanding and combining and all that good stuff. So that's going to be, I'm just going to kind of do this in my head. 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 12x plus 9. I, I had to think about how to foil this out. That's what I was doing. Uh, distributing this with itself. And then distribute the 3. So that's plus 6x plus 9 minus 1, which is 4x squared plus 18x. Uh, that's 9. 9 is 18 minus 1 plus 17. So that's the f of g function. So if you had a problem now that said f of g like of 3, then you wouldn't, you could say, you could plug the 3 into g and then plug that result into f, but you could also just plug the 3 into that function that we just found, the f of g function. And that would give you the same exact thing. All right, it also wants me to find the domain of each function. Uh, the domain means what can go in for x uh, and result in a real number. Well, first we say, well, the first thing that happened was I plugged something into g. So I say, well, what values of x can go into g? And it's anything. Anything can go into g. Any real number. And it would get you, give you a real number result. But then I say, well, once that goes in, what real number could go into it, to f? And any real number can go into that too. So that means the domain is all anything, all real numbers. The domain, I don't do that again. What are you doing? The domain is all real numbers. All right, let's do part B. Part B, we're doing G of F. So that means we're taking the whole f function and plugging it into the g function. So we're taking this whole f function and plugging it in to the g function. So in the place of that x in the g function, I'm going to put x squared plus 3x minus 1 plus 3. So that x got replaced with that whole expression that was f. Um, so distribute, it'll give me 2x squared plus 6x minus 2 plus 3. By the way, if I make a mistake on any of these, feel free to text me. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, it's possible that I can make a mistake, you know, trying to rush through these things. So text me so that I can try to correct it in the, in the video if you notice a mistake. Um, so let's see here. That's going to be 2x squared plus 6x plus 1. Um, and that is the answer to part B. But it also wants to know the domain. Again, what can go into F? Any real number will give you a real number answer for F. And then that's going to go into G. So the real number is going to go into G. And what can go into G is also any real number because any real number you plug into G will also give you a real number answer. So that means that the domain again, is all reals. All right, this time we're just trying to find the domain uh, of f of g. Um, so there may be a couple ways to do this. The, I'll show you the first way that comes to mind. So first, we say, what is the domain of g since since g is the first thing we're doing right the g is the first thing that's that something's going to get plugged into here and so we say uh, uh, the overall domain domain the domain of g is uh, all x such that x minus one does not equal zero remember that the the 
the uh, denominator can't equal zero. As long as the denominator doesn't equal zero, we're okay. So anything besides that. So then we solve that and we get X cannot equal one. So right off the bat, we know that one is not included in the domain. But then the whatever G does, it gets plugged into F. So this is going to get plugged into here, which means um, what can't go into F? What can't go into F? Well, hopefully you can see that negative two can't go into F. That doesn't mean that negative two is not in my domain. Okay, I know that's confusing, but I'm, my domain is what, my, the question is what can go into G that then can go into F also. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, I know negative two can't go into F, but what's gonna happen is the G function four over X minus one is what's going to go into that. So the four over X minus one is what can't equal negative two. See something's, something's going to go into here first. And so we know negative, we know one is going to screw things up, but then once that, what, what other, what else might screw things up is anything that goes in for X that results in negative two, which will then make mess things up in the F. So this can't result in negative two. So I say four over X minus one can't be negative two. And then I solve that inequality. And the way that I would solve it is I would multiply both sides by X minus one to get the X minus one off the bottom. So that cancels that out. And so I get four does not equal negative two X plus two. And then I get the X by itself. Uh, and that's going to be two does not equal negative two X divided by negative two. And uh, X does not equal negative one. So overall, uh, the overall domain will be all x such that x does not equal 1 or negative 1. The 1 came from here, the negative 1 came from here. If you wanted to say x does not equal plus or minus 1, that's the same thing, that's fine too. Awesome. Um, let me do another one. Uh, let me go the other way with it. Let me change this problem to uh, what if instead of f of f of g, what if it said find the domain of g of f? Find the domain of g of f. How would that change things? Okay. First, we're going to just focus on f because that's what the uh, input is going into first. So I'm just going to look at the domain of f. That's going to be uh, x plus 2 does not equal 0. So x does not equal negative 2. So that's already right off the bat uh, an excluded value from my domain. But then I say, what can't go into G? Right? Because whatever, I know f of x is going to get plugged into that spot. So what can't go into G? What can't go into G? Hopefully you, you can already see it. One can't go into G. But that doesn't mean one is not in our domain. It means that, it means that F of X can't result in one. So it means we need to find out what value we plug into X that would end up giving us one, which would then mess things up when it gets plugged into G. So I say one over X plus two cannot equal one. And then I solve that 
inequality by multiplying by x plus 2 uh, to get it off the bottom. So that becomes 1 does not equal um, distribute here uh, x plus 2 subtract 2 uh, negative 1 does not equal x. So the overall domain is all x such that x does not equal uh, negative 2 from that one and negative 1 from that one. And there is my answer for that example. All right, here's another example that's similar to the previous one, um, part A. And if you want to, go ahead and try this on your own and see if you uh, can do it or where you might get stuck before we do it together. All right, part A, um, f of g. Again, I'm doing the g first. So I'm, gonna, or, or, I'm already going to say uh, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 1. All right, that's one of my excluded values already. Then I say this can't equal what? I actually just realized that part A is a repeat of what we've already done, but why not? We'll go ahead and do it again. We say 4 over x minus 1 can't equal whatever can't go in here, which is uh, negative 2, right? Because negative 2 is what can't go in for x there. So then I solve that. Multiply by x minus 1. That's uh, going to be 4 does not equal negative 2x plus 2. Add 2 it. I'm sorry. Uh, subtract 2. Um, 2 does not equal negative 2x divided by negative 2. And x does not equal negative 1. So there's my domain. Domain is uh, all x such that x does not equal 1 and negative 1. So I'm just going to say plus or minus 1. But we've already done that before, so that's nothing new. Uh, but what it wanted us to do was not only find the domain, but actually find f of g. So to find f of g, uh, I am going to uh, kind of do what I drew before. I am going to uh, take the whole g function and plug it into the f function, which means I'm taking all of that and I'm plugging it in to there. All right, so that's going to be 1 over, this is f of g, 1 over, and the x gets replaced with the 4 over x minus 1, so plus 2. Okay, then I have to do some good old algebra uh, to simplify this big expression here. So first, I think I will uh, combine those two terms into a single thing by finding a common denominator. So 4 over x minus 1 plus 2 over 1. And I'm going to get a common denominator by multiplying this by x minus 1. On the, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. That gets me a common denominator. So now it's 4 over x minus 1 plus 2x minus 2 over x minus 1. And I can combine those to make, uh, combine my like terms on top here, and it becomes 2x plus 2 over x minus 1 because the 4 and the negative 2 combined to get the positive 2 right there. And the 2x didn't have a like term, so it just came as it was. Remember that the, the, the denominators do not change when you add fractions. They just stays like it is. So 2x plus 2. So now this becomes 1 over 2x plus 2 over x minus 1. And then I'm going to keep change flip when I'm dividing fractions, right? So keep the 1, change it to multiplication, and flip that. So instead of 2x plus 2 over x minus 1, it is x minus 1 over 2x plus 2. So now just multiply straight across and we this is just 1 over 1. So it's just going to be x minus 1 over 2x plus 2. And that is the answer. That is the expression uh, that is equivalent to f of g. All right, part b is f of f. f of f. 
Okay, so that means I'm taking the F function and I'm plugging it in to itself. So instead of 1 over x plus 2, it's 1 over, and the x gets replaced by the whole thing, 1 over x plus 2, plus 2. Go ahead and combine that. That's going to be uh, 1 over x plus 2, plus 2 over 1, multiplied by x plus 2 on the bottom and top. And so that gives me 1 over x plus 2 plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2, which is 2x plus 5 when I combine like terms on top over x plus 2. So this then becomes 1 over 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. And uh, keep change flip, 1 times x plus 2 over 2x plus 5 which is 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. Now, it wants me to also find the domain of f of f. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is the way we've already shown you, um, which is to say what, uh, what can't go into f right off the bat. Um, x plus 2 can't equal 0, so x can't equal negative 2. Then you say, well, also, when this gets plugged into itself, it can't result in negative 2 either. Because if it results in negative 2, that's also going to mess it up, since it gets plugged into itself. So I say 1 over x plus 2 also can't equal negative 2. And I solve that. Multiply by x plus 2 to get the x plus 2 off the bottom. So that cancels. So I've got 1 cannot equal negative 2x minus 4. Add 4. 5 can't equal negative 2x divided by negative 2. So x can't equal uh, negative 5 halves. So my overall domain is all x such that x cannot equal negative 2 or negative 5 halves. Okay, but let me show you one other way you could have done that, and that is to say, to use the composite function that we made over, earlier over here. So I'm doing f of f, and I've already done the composite function, and that is that right there. So first I say, uh, you know what I just realized? Uh, I just realized that I made a mistake earlier, that when I did this, uh, I wrote this upside down. That was not supposed to be that. It was supposed to be x plus 2 over 2x plus 5. That was the f of f uh, composite function. So um, now, so again, going back to what I was saying just a second ago, um, to find the domain, you can uh, first say what can't go into f, like we've been doing, domain. What can't go into f? Well, you say x plus 2 can't equal 0, and so x can't equal negative 2, just like we've been doing. Then you would have, kind of before, the earlier way we did it, we'd say, well, then also 1 over x plus 2 also can't equal negative 2 either. But the other way to do it is to use this composite function, to use this composite function right here, and to say, I'm just going to use that composite function to say, well, 2x plus 5 also can't equal 0. And solve that inequality. 2x cannot equal negative 5. x can't equal negative 5 halves. Which is the same thing we got doing it the other way. So that the over, overall domain, again, is the same thing we wrote earlier. X cannot equal negative two and negative five halves. And that is a possible way to do all of those composite function domains. I know, uh, I feel like this domain of composite functions is a bit of a confusing thing to do. Uh, but if one of those ways makes more sense to you than the other, then feel free to use that. 
Um, I hope uh, I hope this brought a little bit of clarity to that uh, problem. All right, example five here from the book uh, showing that two composite functions are equal. So it wants you to show for this f and g function that f of g of x is the same thing as g of f of x, which is both which are both just going to give you x. So so we're going to here we go. We're going to do it. We're going to first plug this into here and see what we get. So three, and we're going to replace the x with one third x plus four, and then minus four. So this is this is f of g, where I'm plugging the g function into the f function. So let's see what happens. I can go ahead and multiply the three by the one third, and what do, what do I get when I multiply three with one third? It just cancels out and becomes 1. So then I just got x plus 4 minus 4. And then what happens is the 4 and the minus 4, they cancel out. So I just get x, which is what I was supposed to get. And now try the g of f. And let's see if, let's see if that happens the same way. So this time, we are going the other way. We're plugging this into here. So one third, and then that becomes three x minus four plus four. So this is g of f. So what we can do here is that the negative four and the positive four, they can go ahead and cancel each other out and get zero. So then you've got one third times three x, and then go ahead and multiply the one third with the three, and they cancel each other out and get one. So now you just get x. So we have just proven it with the, the two uh, ways we just did that. All right, this next one is uh, very different. Find functions f and g such that f of g equals big H if big H of x equals x squared plus 1 to the 50th. So before we were taking two kind of simple functions and composing them together into a more complex function, but here we're given the composition of functions, which is already the more complex function, and we're trying to break it apart into perhaps its more simple parts. So we've got we've got h, or we let's say we've got f of g is equal to x squared plus one to the fiftieth. This is not going to be too hard. It's not as hard, it's not as hard as you might think it is. So we're trying to find f and g such that if you plug g into f, you get x squared plus 1 to the 50th. So think of g as the smaller inside um, piece of the function and f as the bigger picture function. So G is the smaller in, inner piece and F is the bigger outer uh, picture. So pretty simply, G is just this part right here, X squared plus one. And F is just going to take that and raise it to the 50th. So F could just be X to the 50th. Because when you take this and plug it in there, you get that x squared plus 1 to the 50th. Hopefully that made that seem a lot simpler. All right, so here's another example like that. Here's the overall function. We're trying to do f and g uh, to create that function when we plug the g into the f. So again, the g is the, think of g as the small and f as the large. Or you think of the G as the inner and F as the outer or the bigger picture. So maybe G could kind of be this function that's happening right here on the inside of that bigger one. It can just be the X plus one. And then what would we plug X plus one into to get one over X plus one? It would just be one over X because when you plug this into there, you get one over X plus one. All right, that finishes us up for 6.1. Uh, I'll see you again in 6.2.